Hi guys, it is Manga Reads. <laughs> ah yes, it is time my friends, because today I am going to make the most erratic theory I have ever made on YouTube. Now I talk a lot of shit sometimes, <laughs> but this this is pushing the limit. But it has, it has its grounds and I'll explain everything as I go along. So what I'm going to be talking about today is I'm going to be estimating how strong Melian is, is at this present moment. Okay, so we're going to estimate his power level, and I'll explain to you all the reasons I have for all my numbers, and you know, to start off, I must say to you that we won't have a definite number, we will have a range, a high part and a low part, and you'll be like, the most is like here, and the lowest is like here. I'm going to tell you all the information that I consider, and I'll tell you what, if you don't agree with what I say, you can comment and you can say, for this reason, I don't agree. And if you agree, you can say, well, I agree. You can do what you want if you agree. But if you don't agree, tell me why you don't agree. Because that's going to help me to get closer to finding the actual number. Because we have Merlin Rudusiel. <laughs> I like that guy's name. Rudusiel, that's the bitch ass archangel I don't like. And Esterosa. I think there's somebody else. Um, Hendrickson and uh, Trefus. I think they're also coming. We have those guys that are on their way to the castle where Melodus is. So let's get started. Now the first thing you're going to see on um, on the screen is that I have this picture from his chapter 183. That's before Melodus came back to life. And the reason I have this chapter is that in order to determine Melodus's power, I need to know where he stands in terms of commandments. Because commandments make you stronger, undoubtedly. So commandments themselves carry some level of power here. Now, why I have this on screen is because I was initially thinking that Melodas had the commandment of piety from Zeldris and the commandment of love from Esteros. That's what I was thinking. But that is not the case. Because as you can see right here, Melodas is in purgatory and it looks pretty cold right here. Though. And someone says, You really don't got yourself slaughtered, something fierce to stand, Melodas. And Meredith says, you've got some morbid hobbies peeping in on people to pass the time. And this guy, whoever it is, said, nonsense, my eye of the truth simply showed me everything that happened to your sorry self. And Meredith is like, ah, so that's it. And this guy says, even someone, the likes of you, once having been stricken with the commandments of piety and charity, and we know that those are the commandments for Zeldris and Esterosa. So I was thinking that maybe they... And Melodus has this um, commandment, but he doesn't have it. Well, kinda. He has half, but we'll get there. And he goes on to say that even someone the likes of you, having been stricken with the commandments, piety and charity, there was nothing for you to do other than to wait and die. Anyway, let's keep moving now. This is going to show us why he doesn't have these commandments. So let's get to the next page. Um, the guy was saying there's nothing else left for Melodus to do other than die and. Meta says, well, thank, but thanks to that, I'm nice and free from that commandment now. And the king, well, he says, true indeed. And he says, there are only two ways to free yourself from the commandments I've created. And this is the, the demon king, guys. We know who this is. This is Melodus' father. He says, one is to defeat the Ten Commandments that bestowed it upon you, which have been the owners of the commandments, Zeldris and. Uh, oh, that is why he got stricken because they killed him. Alright, so that's Zeldris and Esterosa. And the other is there. And he did die. He never beat him, but he died. Well, he never beat him yet. <laughs> because it's coming, guys. Anyway, and Meredith says, But it's thanks to the curse that you afflicted me with that I'm able to come back to life over and over again. Too bad for you. <laughs> and he's laughing. And Demon King says, Ha ha ha, the tough guy ain't fooling me. Is it fear? Possibly anger. I can pick up the vibrations from your trembling loud and clear. And they keep talking, and Meredith attacks him. Anyway, point being is that. Melodus doesn't have these commandments that I thought he had, right? And, you know, we can keep going back and forth about this for a few while, but we're just going to admit it. He doesn't have these commandments. He died. He wasn't in the Ten Commandments when he died either, so he never had a commandment to begin. Also, when you die, you can lose your commandment. It's not, you don't lose it automatically, so you must take it, as you saw with Galan when Esther took it from him. So, that's one. He doesn't have any commandments right now, but when he came back to life, 
Melodies had a power level of 30, 30, 31,000. Yes, Melodies had a power level of about 31,000, somewhere around there. It was half of his power, which would have given him about power there. We should have given him a power level of 62,000 once he stopped using Lost Vein, which have split him into clones and stuff like that. So his power level was about 62,000. Just like that. No assault mode, no nothing. No, when he went into assault mode, Escanor was fighting him when he was in assault mode. And Escanor, before he got to the one, the strongest, he had a power level of somewhere about 144,000. Alright, so right here knowing the fight between Escan Escanor and Melodas. So Melodas stabbed him and he fell. Um, Piggy was like, then is there any other way to stop him? And this lady right here, Merlin, said it's about to be high noon. And he was like, huh, what? Now what this means is that we're gonna get to Escanor the one. Now Escanor got back up. Melodas was like, a word of warning. Acting tall as a tough will bring you a word of hell. Well, it should be a word of hell. Yeah. Well, Escanor says it must be. It seems I must acknowledge something. You are indeed strong. Well, he's getting bigger and bigger because High Noon is when he's at his strongest. That's like exactly Mingdae. And this is this, this is him, the one. I don't know why this thing stretches with him, but it stretches. And it says, that is if you're not counting me. Well, you know, he is strong pretty much. And we're going to get to Escanor's power level pretty soon. So, so in this form, Escanor's total power level as seen by Ox Eye. Pig's is 114,000, and this power level was barely enough to beat Melodas. All right, guys, so this power level was barely enough to beat Melodas, and he got a bit strong afterwards when he got to high noon and he just clobbered Melodas. So 114,000. Now, what that means is that Melodas' power level in assault mode is somewhere near 110,000, and I'm going to be straight up and say I'm not estimating it. Given what it was like when he was fighting with half his clone versus Fraudling, and Fraudling was at what, 32,000, he was at 31,000, how evenly matched they were. They were evenly matched here, but Escanor still got a bit stronger given that it wasn't exactly high noon as yet. So it was about 110,000. That's what I'm, that's an estimate. So that's the first estimate. Melodas in assault mode is about 110,000. Now, another thing we need to look at is when Melodas fought both Esterosa and Zeldris. He beat him with ease, and Zeldris, as we all know, had the power of the demon. So, what that means is that we're going to just say 110,000 uh, Melodas in his assault mode. Now, what we're going to do next is that we're going to tally the powers of the commandments. Now, how do we get the, uh, the actual power of the commandments? Well, we can take a look at chapter 263, 264, and 265. That is where Esterosa, sorry, Esterosa took in the commandments of Monspeed and Galan. Now, Esterosa had a power level of about 61,000. Alright, well, 60,000 actually. So it was about a power level of 60,000 that I read online. It's not really in the chapters that I read, but I read online to get a number. He was at 60,000 and Zelius was at 61. So all this important information comes when Esther Rosa was fighting Sariel and Tariel in chapter 264 and 265 and 263. Because they took him to this other dimension that they created and he was drowned in water. Well, he was submerged in water, hit with a typhoon and hit with lightning. That was supposed to be destroying him on a molecular level. So they said, and they left him there to die and he came back. When he came back, well, before he came back actually, he said the words Jikai and we saw the commandment from Ganon. Ganon's commandment in his hand. They left him there and returned. He returned after them because they thought he was dead. When he came back, Hawk said his power level was 88,000. Now, I'm gonna assume that the source that I saw online, it was not as a wiki, I guess, and then since wiki. I'm gonna assume that information is accurate, right? And Garan's commandment alone took him to 88,000 from 60,000. That's gonna mean that he got a power boost of 28,000 from Garan's commandment alone. Now, at the combat class of 88,000, he was fighting Sariel and Tariel. And it's pretty funny those names actually. <laughs> Sorry, I'll tell you. 
And when he was fighting them, it pretty much was overwhelming them. They were like, how did you come back from there? You can only come back from there if you have a power level similar to ours. And he's like, it's not so difficult. I'm strong. And then he literally broke the little one, Tar Saria, I think. I don't know their names separate. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. But he broke him with one hit, all the moves in his body. And the next one, Tariel, the, the liquid one, that's really big, that guy. He was destroyed with one attack, split him in two. I can't believe he lived from that. And that's at 88,000. Now they both combined and they were fighting him in this world, in Leon's, in, in Britannia. They were fighting him when he was at 88,000. And he took in another commandment. He took in Monspeed's silence commandment. Now, let's get going with the match. So, I'm going to assume that the... You know the number was right and say it was at 60,000. You know, if you don't like there's the assumption you can change your own numbers but the addition from here is going to be pretty straightforward and the multiplication of it you can check by yourself. So we say it starts at 60,000. You took in Garan's commandment. Garan's commandment took him from 60,000 to 88,000. Now before I continue it's also worth noting that Zeldris himself after losing his commandment um, Merida showed some sort of concern after um, Merida took in his commandment, his commandment of piety, and he was asking Zeldris if he was going to be fine. And Zeldris was like, What, you think I'm going to fall there in the likes of the archangels without my commandment? Which means that, you know, you get some power from the commandment. So there's no debate right there. So from 60,000 to 88,000 means that it's 88,000 minus 60,000 is going to give you 28,000. So I'm going to assume. That on average, all commandments give the same power. So there might be some commandments that are stronger than some. There might be some commandments that are weaker than others. We don't know. But I'm going to assume that they all give the same power on average. And that's 28,000. That's a combat class of 28,000. Although, to be honest, Garan's combat class was 26. But that was before, that was without magic. So I'm just going to assume it's 28,000. There, there might be holes if you don't like it, you can use your own numbers and do the calculation. That's why I say it's going to be a range. So 28,000 at the high end, when someone likes Melodus or Esterosa takes it in. 25,000 at the low end, when someone as weak as Garan, or Garan isn't weak, but he's weak, takes it in. So 25,000 at the low end. Multiplied by 2 is going to give us 50,000 plus Esterosa 60,000 gives him a grand class of 110,000 right now in chapter 265. Big one. Well, actually, it's 28 times 2, which is 56, which would have been 116,000. You know, because Esterosa is the one that got 28. Now we're going to assume that Melodes can get 28,000 from his commandments that he took. He took in five commandments. He took in the commandment of pity, he took in Froden's commandment of selflessness, he took in... I'm gonna assume that he took in Grey Roads, he's, I'm gonna assume that he took in Gloxinia's, and I'm gonna assume that he took in Dolores. So that's Gloxinia, Dolore, Grey Road, um, Zeldris, and Froden. That's five of them. Yeah, I'm gonna assume that's the five commandments he took in. So that five commandments multiplied by 28,000. So 5 times 28 is going to give us, okay, I'm going to do it in my head. So 5, 8 is 40, 0, 5, 2 is 10, 14. That's 140,000. Damn. And I'm assuming that, you know, before, when he went into assault mode, his combat class was 110,000. So 110,000 plus 140,000 gives Melodus the highest combat class possible of 250,000 right now. And the low end would be 25,000 times 5, which is 125,000 times, well, added to 110, which is 135,000. So somewhere between 135,000, 235,000, and 250,000 is Melodesis combat class. Now, how strong is that? Well, we have to keep into consideration that the Demon Kings power half of them, five commandments is a quarter of his power so if a quarter of his power is 28,000 times 5 which is 140,000 then that means that a full half is 280,000 which means that Demon King has a power level of somewhere about 560,000 I would assume that the Supreme Deity herself has somewhere about that class as well given that they in my estimate they bring balance to the world so that's what I'm thinking guys. Melodis 
His power, le power level is somewhere between 235,000 and 250,000. And that's a glorious number if you ask me. So let me hear what you guys think. Comment below. Criticize if you'd like. Agree if you'd like. I'd like to hear more from you. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it and see you soon.